everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet the Matheson beanie, which you can see here in front of you. I have my sample here without a pom-pom on it. The Matheson beanie is a fairly thick beanie and it's worked in this nesting shell stitch. I love the design in it. Uh, has lots of great texture and possibilities for color combination. The beanie can be worn with a pom-pom or without, and our beanie today is sized to fit an adult head, so 20 to 22 inch circumference. For the pattern, you're going to need about 125 yards, 130 yards of three different colors. Today I'm working with the Color Theory yarn by Two of Wands and Lion Brand yarn, and uh, it's a worsted weight acrylic yarn. I find it a little bit on the lighter side if you're looking for something to uh, substitute it with. But again, you're going to need about half a ball of each of your three colors. I'll be using the color Thunder for my color A, the color Peacock for my color B, which is this green color, and half a ball of the ivory color, which is this lighter color. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. I've lost mine. There it is. Five millimeter crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, take a look around. Don't forget to subscribe. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and crochet stitch tutorials. The Matheson beanie today is worked from the brim up and it's worked all as one piece. The brim is worked in rows, so you're going to take your color A and work a slip knot. And then you're going to work a foundation chain with a total of 13 chains. Once you have your 13 chains worked, you're going to work row one by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook and then into each chain all the way across. Now if you are not a fan of working slip stitches, you may work either a single crochet or a half double crochet instead, but I'm going to work slip stitches just in each stitch starting in the second chain from your hook all the way across. When you come across you're going to chain one and turn. We're now going to continue working slip stitches. This time working in the first stitch and in the back loop only. So when you look at the top of your stitch you have a loop that's closest to you and one in behind. That one that's furthest away and behind is your back loop only. So you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. When you come all the way across you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to repeat this row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately uh, 16 to 17 inches. That's laid flat, relaxed, so when you stretch it, it should stretch to your 20 to 22 inch circumference. So Continue to repeat row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 16 to 17 inches and then meet me back here. Once you have worked 16 to 17 inches when it's relaxed, it should stretch quite nicely. You're going to then fold over your brim, being careful not to twist so that the two short ends meet. You're going to chain one and you're now going to work a slip stitch, stitch theme seam <laughs> in each stitch all the way across. So working in the back loop only of your first side and working in the back loop only of your second side slip stitch. You're going to repeat that in each stitch all the way across 
so that your two short ends are joined with a seam. Be careful not to skip any stitches or work twice in any. You want it to be fairly smooth all the way across. Once you come all the way across, you can chain one. You're going to then turn your brim so that it is right side out, that your seam is on the inside. We're now going to work around this rough edge of our brim and the hat, for the hat body, and it is worked in rounds. For round one, we're going to work 72 half double crochet stitches evenly all the way around. So I am just inserting my hook wherever it feels comfortable all the way around. If it helps, you can put a stitch marker about halfway and then work 36 stitches on one side, 36 on the other, uh, just to help spread them out a little bit. But you want to have it fairly evenly worked 72 half double crochet stitches. When you come all the way around, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. At the end of your round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch in the first stitch. Now if you wanted to change the size of your beanie for that first round, you would just need a multiple of four stitches. For round two, you're going to chain one, still working in our color A. We're going to single crochet into the first stitch. Next, skip the next stitch and work three double crochet stitches into the next. Skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. Skip the next stitch, work three double crochets into the next stitch. Skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. When you come to your final stitch, you're going to switch to your color B and I'll show you how I like to change color uh, when I come around. So go ahead, repeat all the way around. When you come all the way around at the end of round two and you have one stitch remaining, which is one double crochet stitch, you're going to switch to your color B. So to switch to your color B, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. I'm working with my color A. Yarn over and pull through two loops. You can then drop your color A and you're going to leave it attached as we're going to carry it up the inside of our beanie. You're then going to put color B on your hook and pull through and then simply join with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. You're now all set to continue working with your color B. For round three, we're going to chain three and this counts as a double crochet stitch coming out of that single crochet. You're then going to work a double crochet two together working under each of the next two single crochet stitches. So working under this first single crochet and under the next one. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook under the first single crochet stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop to the height of your double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. You're then going to reach across under the next single crochet stitch, yarn over, insert your hook, 
yarn over and draw up a loop to the height of your double crochet yarn over and pull through two loops yarn over and pull through all three loops that's your double crochet two together you're then going to work three double crochet stitches into the next single crochet so into this single crochet stitch work three double crochet stitches there's one two and three next work a double crochet two stitches together working under this single crochet stitch the one that you just worked in and under the next single crochet stitch then work three double crochet stitches into the top of the next single crochet you're going to repeat this all the way around to your first single crochet so double crochet two stitches together working under the single crochet stitches followed by three double crochets into the top of the next single crochet stitch repeat all the way around we're also going to be switching to our color C in the final stitch At the end of round three, you're going to work your final double crochet two together, working the first part under that last single crochet, and then the second part of the stitch is worked under the first single crochet of the round. You're then going to work two more double crochet stitches into that first stitch switching back to your color or switching to your color C in the final stitch you're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the starting chain three You're now ready to continue working with round four in your color C. You're going to leave your color B attached. For round four, we're going to start by working a long double crochet stitch into the middle double crochet of the shell or the set of three down below. So yarn over, insert your hook into that middle double crochet two rounds below of that shell down below worked in your color a and you're just going to work a long double crochet you're then going to in the space between these two shell clusters of the row below you're going to work three double crochets into this space So you're just working directly in between and under those two shell clusters of the last round. You're then going to work a double crochet two together, working in the middle double crochet that you just worked in two rounds below, and then across and over into the next middle double crochet of the next shell two rounds below next into the space between the, the next two shell clusters you're going to work three double crochet stitches
You're now going to repeat that all the way around. So double crochet, two together, working in the middle double crochet stitches two rounds below, and then work three double crochet stitches in the space between the two shell clusters of the previous round. Repeat that all the way around. You're going to be switching back to your color A in your final stitch. Once you come all the way around at the end of round four, you're going to finish off the round by working a double crochet stitch down into the middle double crochet of your shell stitch below. And you're going to switch back to your color A in this final stitch. And then join with the slip stitch into the first double crochet. For round five, with color A, we're going to chain three, and this counts as a double crochet stitch. You're then going to work a double crochet two together, working into the double crochet, the middle double crochet stitch of your shell two rounds below, the first part into that stitch, followed by reaching across the next shell cluster into the next middle double crochet of the next shell two rounds below and completing your stitch. You're then going to into the space between the two shell clusters work three double crochets. Double crochet two stitches together, working into the middle double crochet of the shell two rounds below and across, skipping the shell cluster in between to the next middle double crochet two rounds below and then repeat. You're going to repeat this all the way around, switching to your color B in your final stitch. When you come all the way around at the end of round five, I am here at my final double crochet two together. You're then going to finish off the round by working two double crochet stitches into the space between your last shell cluster and your next. So because of your joins, it's a little bit tricky, but you just have to insert your hook underneath your last color C stitch there and work two double crochets. In your final double crochet, you will switch to your color B in that final stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, which was that starting chain three. You're then going to chain one. Now for the rest of the pattern, we're going to repeat rounds four and five, seven more times alternating through our colors A, B, and C. So you'll remember your round four began with a double crochet into the middle double crochet of the next shell stitch two rounds below, followed by your three double crochets into the next space. double crochet two stitches together and repeat all the way around. So that was your round four and the round five which we just worked and you're going to always be alternating through colors A, B, and C. So once you've completed through to the round uh, 19, your hat's going to measure uh, I believe about nine inches from the bottom to the top you're going to meet me back here. Once you come up uh, to the end of your repeat, so the end of round 19, this is what your work from the beginning is going to look like. You'll have joined with the slip stitch in the first stitch. You can then fasten off and you want to leave a long tail. Uh, your long tail should be about 15 
to 20 inches long. So that is your beanie. You're then going to take a yarn needle, thread the long tail through your yarn needle, and you're going to use this long tail to close the top of your hat. To close the top of your hat, you're simply going to weave your yarn in and out through the top, the final round of stitches. Now when I'm inserting my hook to, or my needle to work around, I'm inserting it through the space where I would typically insert my crochet hook to work the space. Uh, I do find it easier to work in and out through the spaces than through one of the strands of yarn. I'll just make it a little bit easier to close and you'll have less resistance. So you're just going to weave your needle in and out through this top or final round of stitches all the way around. I am almost all the way around. I'm just going to keep going. When you come around, you're then going to Gently, you can hang on to your yarn needle for a little bit longer and you're going to just gently pull the top of the hat closed. Before you close it fully, so I've closed it to about an inch and a half there, you're going to stick your needle down through into the inside of your hat and just turn it inside out for just a brief moment. Tighten it once again if you need to. You want to pull it as uh, close to a close as you can without breaking your thread. So don't pull too, too hard. You just want to pull it gently. You're then going to take your needle and simply sew the top of your hat closed. So you'll have an opening that's about an inch to an inch and a half. You just want to take your needle and yarn and just quickly sew the top. I'm sewing it from the inside in order to ensure that if there is a little bit of a seam, it is tucked on the inside of your hat and I'll give you a nicer top on the outside, especially if you choose not to include a pom-pom. So sew the top of your hat closed. Once you come all the way across that opening, I like to finish off just a little bit of a knot to keep it secure. You can then weave in your end. Whoops, I lost my tail. <laughs> Try this again. There we go. You can then fasten off and go ahead, weave in any other ends that you might have out there. Turn your hat so that it is right side out. That is your top. And I'll zoom back a little bit so you can see your finished beanie. So that's all there is to working the Matheson beanie. You can then leave it as it is, or if you like, you can add a pom-pom to the top. It's completely up to you. So enjoy. I look forward to seeing your finished hats. You can share those with me on social media, tag Rich Textures Crochet, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.